Good morning. It's so good to see you this morning. Good morning and welcome. Welcome to Hillcrest Congregational Church, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. My name is Reverend Kim Kendrick. I proudly serve as our interim senior minister here at Hillcrest alongside our pastoral associate, Allison Silva. Whether you're here in person or you're worshiping with us virtually online, we want to say welcome and we are so happy to see and experience your juicy face. We are still on our and in our worship experience of Come to the Table. This week, we will explore Come to the Table of Hope. And we are visited today, and we are so happy to have our guests from Hope Solutions joining us today, Carrie Verlink, as well as Jasmine Tarkov. We will hear from them as they help us to learn more, to hear more, to see how we can do more to help those in need throughout Costa County, Costa, Contra Costa County. Y'all know I'm from Philly, right? <laughs> One of the texts that's gonna be read into your ear gate is Matthew 25. Matthew 25 is an invitation, an invitation from Jesus to help all to serve the un and underserved. Those that are in rural communities, small and large communities, urban communities, those are young and not so young, those that experience housing and those that are not experiencing housing. And so this invitation will help us to learn how we can be the hands and feet of God. So family, as we begin our worship experience, here's another invitation to each and every one of you to extend the peace of Christ to all. So let's stand, let's give each other a holy high five, a glorious fist bump, Tell somebody, may the peace of God be with you and also with you. Thank you. <laughs> peace be with you. My mic, peace be with you. My microphone is off. My microphone. Family, we will have more time to gather, more time to hug, more time to love up on each other, immediately following our worship experience in the fellowship hall. As long as Jesus doesn't come back, we will have time. And so let us continue our worship experience as we listen to our news of community. Good morning, everyone. My name is Bruce Smiley. I'm honored to be with you today as your liturgist. Special welcome to anyone worshiping with us for the first or second time. We pray that you find our service joyful. Welcome to Hope Solutions, who are with us in worship today. They'll provide a presentation for us a bit later. All are invited to join us in Fellowship Hall after service for a coffee, a conversation, and maybe some goodies. We're all happy to see you in person or virtually today. For those on the inner aisle, 
Would you please write your name and contact information in the folder found in the pew rack in front of you, pass it down to the end of the pew, and as it is returned, you can see who is worshiping with you today. A few announcements. Uh, there will be book club today. Don't forget that one. Adult ed class, of course, is not with us today because Allison has COVID. But adult ed will class will continue next Sunday, October 22nd at 9.30 a.m. with pastoral associate Allison Silva. Hillcrest local church profile has been revised, printed, distributed during last week's worship service, as well as emailed to the congregation. The revision reflects the feedback and the suggestions you have given to the transition team members who spent the last month prayerfully editing, formatting, and rewriting portions of the profile. Please be present next Sunday as we will have a congregational vote immediately following worship. And finally, please read your news of community attached to your bulletin. It contains information with details about many upcoming events at Hillcrest. And now, let us quiet down, prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Will you please join me in the call to worship? You'll find the words on the screen. We come, for God gathers us here with that community called faith, where the hungry are served first, where the thirsty drink life's water. We come, for God welcomes us here into that home called grace, where the naked are clothed in robes of hope, where the stranger is embraced as the long lost prodigal. We come, for God reunites us here, sisters and brothers in that family called love, where the imprisoned model justice, where the sick are cradled in God's peace. Please stand if you are able for our opening hymn. We are singing There's a Spirit in the Air, verses 1, 4, and 5. Our first reading today is very brief, from Leviticus chapter 19. 
You shall treat the stranger who sojourns with you as the native among you, and you shall love him as yourself. For you were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Our second reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 25th chapter, verses 31 through 45. Please receive these words into your ear gates. Now when a human one comes in his majesty and all his angels are with him, he will sit on his majestic throne. All the nations will be gathered in front of him. He will separate them each from the other just as a shepherd separates sheep from goats. He will put the sheep on his right side, but the goats, they're gonna go over to the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who will receive good things from my father, inherit the kingdom that was prepared for you before the world even begun. I was hungry and you gave me food to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothes to wear. I was sick and you took great care of me. I was in prison and you came to see about me. Then those that are righteous will go ahead and reply to him, "Uh, Jesus, when did we see you hungry? When did we not send the DoorDash to your house? Or when were you thirsty and we didn't help you out with something to drink? When did we see you sick? When did we see you in prison? When did we not come and knock on your door, give you a text, send you an email? Jesus, tell us, when did we not do that? Then the king replied to them, I assure you that when you have done it for one of the least of these siblings of mine, you have done it for me. Then... He said to them, those that were on the left, get away from me. Get away from me, you who receive terrible things. Go into the unending fire that has been prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you didn't give me anything to eat. I was thirsty and you didn't give me anything to drink. I was a stranger and you didn't even welcome me in. I was naked and you didn't give me clothes to wear. I was sick and in prison and you didn't come and see about me and pay me a visit. Then they will reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or sick in prison and didn't do any of these things to help you? And Jesus answered again, I assure you that when you have not done these things for the least of these, you have not done it for me. This is the good news. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
whistle as he crosses the street Seems embarrassed to be there Oh, think twice It's another day for you and me Paradise Oh, think twice It's another day for you You and me in on the soles of her feet She can't walk but she's trying Amen and amen. And I love when folks also do double duty, so we have to wait for Ryan to get back to our tech team. We are blessed to have a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, Christian education program, specifically in the form of our Sunday school. And so if we have those that are with us um, that are school age that would like to go to Sunday school, you are welcome at this time to go to your own worship experience. I ask all of us that are here that are not school age, but yet we are envious about the good snacks that they have, if we can give them a round of applause and encouragement as they are on their way. Keep clapping, keep clapping, because some are shy, some are shy, and they know that you love them, they know that you support them, and so therefore they go ahead and we thank as well Miss Vicki Hackett for being our Sunday school teacher. Amen, amen and amen. We are honored today to be um, with us in Worship Hope Solutions. We are grateful to have with us Jasmine Tarkoff, Consulting Director of Strategic Initiatives and Co-Convener of the Multi-Faith Action Coalition. As well with her is Carrie Verink, Development and Community Outreach Manager. We're so pleased that they're here. Hope Solutions is and has a mission. Their mission is to heal the effects of poverty and homelessness by providing permanent housing solutions and to provide vital support services to the most vulnerable families as well as individuals. And Hillcrest, 
They do not do this work alone. They are collaborative in this ministry by partnering with faith communities such as Hillcrest. Let us receive Jasmine and Carrie right now with a warm welcome. That's perfect. So I'm just, um, I have my phone up here because I really want to, we're going to have a really fun exercise um, toward the end of our presentation. It's going to be a full participation moment, which I really appreciate. Thank you for Katie and for Pastor Kim for helping to craft this with us. So I have my phone up here so we can just keep a bit of an eye on time. I want to thank you, first of all, for caring enough about what's going on in our world around us to become educated and to learn and to know about how we might address this problem of homelessness. I know you see it everywhere now, today. It's disturbing, it's scary, and it feels like it's a problem that isn't getting any better. A lot of people say that we have a housing crisis, but really, I believe we have a human crisis. Brothers, sisters, parents, children, who are forced to live in what really is intolerable conditions. For places of worship, like Hillcrest and others all around the county, the alarm bells are ringing that we have to do something. And I am so proud to be a part of an organization and a team that feels that we can make a difference toward this intractable problem of homelessness and we're so excited to be here today to be able to share with you what we believe are real concrete steps towards a solution. It's my honor to introduce my friend and my colleague, Carrie. Do you want to say any words? Yes, good morning. Good morning. Again, again my name is Carrie Vierink. I'm the Development and Community Outreach Manager at Hope Solutions. I've been in this com community for a very long time. I call my, my faith community home across the street at Church of the... Resurrection. I'm so pleased to be here today. Thank you, Jasmine. Thank you, Pastor Kim, for setting us up about our mission, vision, values. A little bit more about our history. We were founded in 1997 by a coalition of local faith communities, and we've grown to be the leading housing organization in Contra Costa, providing permanent supportive housing and vital services to over 3,500 of the most vulnerable members of our community. We have over 40 faith communities amongst us that are helping us with our work, along with other civic communities and uh, various groups throughout the county. And we, we are proud to partner with Hillcrest, and thank you again for having us here today. Um, as I mentioned, uh, we've reached over 3,500 people in the last year. We're, we're able to help very different demographics through our services, including people with HIV AIDS, survivors of domestic violence, people with disabilities, and more. What makes us different is that not only are we providing housing, we're providing the services that includes case management, therapy, life skills training, employment support, after school care, and much more to support our neighbors and help them become self-sufficient. Many people talk about a housing crisis. As Jasmine mentioned, we see it as a human crisis, one that affects over 9,000 lives in our community. These folks are all worthy of our love, help, and support. How can we, how can we see it as anything other than a humanitarian catastrophe? So who is homeless in our county? Our unhoused neighbors, are very, a very diverse group of folks, racially, ethnically, age-wise, and where they live. A sampling of some of our demographics data in the county found that over 20% are domestic, uh, domestic violence survivors. 85% have a veteran in the household. 71% have a disabling condition, which are often physical health challenges, some mental health, and some substance abuse issues and challenges. And very importantly, 80% of our folks become homeless in, in Contra Costa County. This is their home, 
This is where their families live, and we have a duty of care to support them. Homelessness is fundamentally a housing affordability crisis. There are three main drivers, rising rents, wages that are not keeping pace, and a lack of supply. We need to build over 34,000 new affordable homes for very low and extremely low income households in Contra Costa County. And this, uh, this graphic helps describe what that looks like. I'm gonna turn it back to Jasmine. Thank you, Carrie. So, yeah, we're on the gears uh, slide. So, you hear it a little bit about what's going on, right? We have a housing affordability crisis going on in our county, right? Several drivers, wages, and more importantly, what I'm gonna be talking to you about is a lack of supply. There just isn't enough homes for all the individuals that need homes. You may see building happening in, in Walnut Creek, for example, right? Lots of building, but a lot of the building that's happening in Walnut Creek is for market rate, um, is market rate housing. This is not housing for the most vulnerable. It's not affordable housing for very low and extremely low income individuals. So that's a huge issue. So naturally, you might say, well, why aren't we just building more housing? So I kind of like to look at it with five factors. The first, I'm still on gears, land. It's really hard to find developable land with the right zoning. Land is also expensive. It can represent between 20 and 20% of the cost of any given project. When you think about cost, can you imagine that today it costs a million dollars to build an affordable housing unit? A million dollars. That's crazy, right? And then when we think about time, it takes about five to seven years to bring affordable housing units online. Five to seven years, how do you tell that family that's living in a car right now, you know what, it's all good. I mean, just give us five to seven years and we'll work it out, right? We don't have the luxury of time to wait. Entitlements, we're gonna talk a lot about the progress that we've made, but the permitting process up until the last couple of years was very cumbersome. It was really complicated to build housing. And then of course we've had nimbyism in our communities, not in our backyard. People who proclaim, you know what, I am God fearing, I wanna help the vulnerable, but just don't do it in my backyard, don't do it in my neighborhood, right? That's nimbyism. And we're doing a lot of work to try to address that. So we are so excited to be introducing, I'm not, yes, cottage communities on faith owned land. As Carrie said, this is permanent supportive housing. This is housing where there's not a time limit on how long folks can stay. And this is a really exciting opportunity because we are providing a solution that is the beginning of people's chance toward healing, getting the help that they need, mental health, physical health, having a dignified place to live, getting the services that they need in order to tackle the trauma of their past lives and being able to rebuild towards something positive. Churches, synagogues, and mosques all around the state are really unique partners. The UC Berkeley Turner Center identified 40,000 acres of developable land for churches, synagogues, and mosques. That's the, city, that's the size of the city of Stockton. That's a lot of viable land. And these homes that um, we are proposing, you can see these small cottages, they're beautiful, they are interior, they have kitchens, they have bathrooms. These aren't tough sheds or pallet homes. These are beautiful, dignified homes um, that we are excited to help people to move into. The next slide. So there may be some alarm bells going off here. Oh my God, are they suggesting that we're actually gonna build at Hillcrest? We are not suggesting that you build at Hillcrest. There are a lot of ways for you to get involved. It is not limited to land. You can get involved through volunteerism, which I know you already do. You do a lot of great volunteer work and I wanna encourage you to keep doing volunteer work. You can support us philanthropically by providing us with 
money and resources to be able to build these homes and to provide these services. And you can make your voice known. You can tell your friends and your neighbors that it's important that we all rise up to God's call to help our neighbors and to help those in need. So what's the opportunity in Contra Costa County? The Turner Center did another deep dive and determined that there's actually over a thousand acres just in our county alone. That is 500 faith institutions that have land. And if you think about it, ultimately that could represent 10,000 affordable homes in our county. We could, with this solution, chip away at a third of the affordable housing shortfall problem. That's incredible when you can really feel like you can make a difference. So we're excited about the opportunity. A lot of the faith institutions that we are talking to are in high resource areas. They're near public transit. They're near grocery stores. They're near schools. Those are all things that are really important for providing a more inclusive community um, for our cities and for our county. So when we go back to thinking about the barriers, um, yeah, you can click through those. Basically, the way to think about this solution is land. We've identified the land through faith partners that are willing to donate their land. Um, we're going to go back one. So sorry. Thank you for working with me on the PowerPoint. I'll go back now to, yeah, one more. Go back one more. There we go. Um, cost, we're, we're recommending manufactured homes. These are coming in at substantially below that million dollar, um, $1 million. The manufactured homes that we're talking about are eighty dollars to $120,000. So that's a real substantial cost savings. We're doing a lot of work in the area of advocacy. Um, last week, Governor Newsom signed SB4, and we were able to get that um, that legislation signed into law to make it easier for faith institutions to be able to build affordable housing. That is such great work. And NIMBYism, we just have to tackle that one neighbor at a time, sharing our love and our concern and our care for all of our brothers and sisters. So I'm excited to introduce, I'm on the next one, that Grace Prez uh, um, uh, picture, if you go forward one. We're so excited to introduce our first project. We ground broke on this project on Wednesday of last week. <laughs> Amen. Um, that, yep, this one. And if you click once, I think it'll show the other uh, the site. Grace Presbyterian Church is uh, in Walnut Creek. It's near Rossmore. This is a um, small. Uh, but mighty site. Um, we leveraged a part of their parking lot. It is designated for seniors. I have a 92 and 93 year old parents. I have to tell you, if they did not have our family, my parents would not survive a day on the streets, not a day. So this is a, a project that we are so proud of and you can see um, I added in the groundbreaking picture up in the top right corner. We couldn't be more proud. Um, What's really interesting about this project is 40% of the cost of the project came in as donated labor and materials. So construction partners, architects, builders, the trades, everybody wants to be a part of this solution. And imagine if everyone just came together and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get everybody together. Here's another church. This is in Pittsburgh. Um, you can see there's a big portion of undeveloped land. It's kind of dirt, right, in that corner. This church, Church of the Nazarene in Pittsburgh, has been hosting a safe parking lot in the back of their church for years, about 15 cars. And they came to us and they said, we want to do more. How can we do more? And we talked to them about leveraging that undeveloped portion of their land and their parking lots. And the next slide will show you a beautiful community for transition age youth. These are young people, 18 to 25 years old, coming out of the foster system, many of them parents. They have nobody to help them with parenting skills, with budgeting skills, with being encouraged to go back to school or to get a job or to get job training. So this is a really, really powerful opportunity to change the trajectory of these individuals' lives forever towards something positive, something dignified. If you go back one slide, what I really love about this, that courtyard slide, 
is we really took time to be sensitive. One of the biggest losses in homelessness is not losing your house or your roof. You've lost community. You don't have anyone left. You are just all by yourself. So one of the things that we really are working on is how do we rebuild community? How do we rebuild places of belonging so people don't feel like strangers? So they feel like they actually belong. And I gotta tell you, I know I wanna feel like I belong, and I think you wanna feel like you belong. This is a beautiful picture of a garden where, where the residents are able to grow their own food, but it's also a wonderful opportunity for volunteerism. Imagine if this garden existed. Some of you, I bet, would love to garden, and I bet you wouldn't mind going out and being able to help volunteer, to grow food, to harvest food. It's a really nice chance for collaboration and um, for, again, building community. So um, we've now moved to the interactive part of our uh, program. Um, you've seen the data. Um, I've told you about the problem. We've talked about the solution. But what I want to do is just take a moment to really make this a lot more personal. So thanks to Katie, we're going to use her teaching model of Oh, gosh, I didn't have it memorized. Think, pair, share. So we're going to have you take a few moments to think about what home means to you. So, And then what we're going to do is we're going to encourage you to turn to your neighbor, and you're going to share. You're going to pair and share. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a share out. So I want you just to really trust me, and I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to take a couple of deep breaths. And then I want you to think about, what does home mean to you? What emotions, what feelings, what memories come up for you when you think about home? So friends, if you're ready, Jasmine asked us a wonderful question. Wonderful question. And if you'll just take about 45 seconds, turn to your neighbor, find someone in the aisle, and answer that question in your row. If you don't have one, anyone in your row, look to the behind you, in front of you. What does home mean to you? What does home mean to you? Cindy and David, if we can include our friend Bill right behind you. You're kind of sandwiched, I see that. That's all right. I got Mr. Bill, and Valerie and Sue have Bill. And if we're ready, if everyone has had an opportunity to share a sentence or a word, Katie is going to serve as our scribe for just a little bit. As you go ahead and... What does friend, I'm sorry, what does home mean to you? Anyone like to start? Here goes Frank. Family. 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 Also. Awesome. Family. Anyone else? Safe space. Safe space. Safe space. Safe space. That's all right. That's security. Security. Family. Safe space. Security. Familiarity. Familiarity. Thank you. Thank you. Shelter. Shelter. Comfort. We're going to do a brief five-second pause because Katie's fingers are just writing away. We had comfort, safe space, familiarity. Carrie is also writing down as well. I heard something over here, Janet. 
Love. Love. Wonderful. Launching pad. Say it again, Jim. Launching pad. Ah, you're able nice. To, from home, you're able to go throughout the world, but you always want to get back to your launching pad. <laughs> the launching pad. You always want to come back to the launching pad. Hold on, John. I'm coming. Go ahead. Dinner. Dinner. Amen. <laughs> Amen. As a foodie at heart, I agree, John. Dinner. Yes, yes. Go ahead, Joshua. I was going to say benchmarks of development or benchmarks of life. Benchmarks of development, benchmarks of life. Thank you for that, Joshua. Celebrations. Celebrations. Clarita said celebrations. Celebrations, yes. I was thinking food. Food, <laughs> yes. Amen and amen. You and I both, yes. Shirley said food. Yes, indeed. Right along with John and myself. Come on, Valerie. Neighbors. 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 Community. Thank you for that, Valerie. Say it again. Leonard. Comfort. 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 Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Even if we have overlapping, don't feel like yours has already been taken. Go ahead and shout it out. Gardens. Gardens. Yes. Thank you for that. Gardens. Water. Amen, amen. Anybody else? What does home mean to you? Pets. Pets, yes. Cannot forget our fur babies, yes. Pets. Family. I think I heard family. And memories. Memories. Thank you for that. Memories. Family, memories, pets, our kids. Love. Yes, 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 yes. What does home mean to you? Foundation. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I'm going to repeat what you said, <laughs> Carolyn. I'm going to repeat what you said. Uh, a lot of mail. <laughs> yes. Amen, amen. I think we've captured some good, good some good stuff, lots of good things. Anything you think or you feel that yours has not been raised and uplifted in our space right now? Calm. Say it one more time, Sue. Calm. calm, calm, amen, calm. Yes, calm as well as peace. Uh, well, I got back from my trip yesterday to plan it to be able to come to church today. Amen. So church. Church. Home means church. Amen. Thank you for that, Carol. Thank you. Anyone else? Anything else? These are good things. These are good things. These are good. Thank you. I'm going to move this back yep. for a moment. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Carrie. It's so interesting. We did um, one year of community organizing in Antioch. We, to, into the city of Antioch, we went to outreach centers, we went to loaves and fishes, we went to soup kitchens. We also met with um, a number of unhoused as well as housed individuals. And this is what, this is a word cloud, and um, you probably know how a word cloud works, the bigger words. Um, are the ones that we heard more frequently. Uh, we'll go back one, thanks, Sue. Um, but so many of the similar sentiments, right? Safety, sanctuary, mm -hmm. healing, right? And what we also heard in stories was that home is a place, many of you talked about it, food, where you can bake a cake for your best friend, right? Or you can care for your elderly parents or your children. Um, you can help your kids do homework, right? You can create that launching pad and those benchmarks, moments, creating memories, right? Mm -hmm. Home is such an important, fundamental human need. And so at Hope Solutions, while we are interested in building homes, structures, roofs, walls, kitchens, bathrooms, and we want to provide people with services I tell you that my greatest mission is to provide hope and to provide new possibilities and to provide new beginnings for people 
who have really suffered a lot of trauma in their lives. I want to ask you, how did this feel to you to do this exercise? You can shout it out. Was it hard? No? Was it, was it inspiring? Nice. Did, did you feel connected? Yeah. And do you feel like you have a shared idea of the importance of home? Yeah. I think we're on the same page. So I'm going to wrap up by saying, um, as a person of faith, I believe that God gives us chances every single day to repair the world. Um, and I believe it's our responsibility to respond in any way that we can. Uh, we are here to serve God and to contribute to the well-being of the most vulnerable. What's happening in our world today can seem so dark and so hard, and some of these problems can feel so intractable, but I believe that we can each be a part of the solution. And so I want to give you a chance to see all the big and small ways that you can actually get involved. Um, and I'm going to invite Carrie to come up, and we're just going to start a tag team, because I know that when I find myself in a moment where I don't know what to do, I really want to do something, but I don't know what to do, I'm really grateful when somebody just says, well, here's a list of things that you can do. There's a way that you can be a positive light in this world. So we're going to start by saying, you can donate items for our backpacks. We have backpack drives and spring basket drives and holiday gift drives and auction baskets. And so you can contribute in little or big ways toward just donating items. You could also volunteer. And there's lots of different ways to volunteer at Hope Solutions. One of the most important and wonderful uh, elements is to help as a homework tutor at one of our site-based programs. Uh, and, Every day of the week, there's an opportunity to connect with our kids and help them, uh, help them move forward in their, with their goals. And I know you are smart out there. I know you guys are smart. And I bet you could make a difference on helping a kid who otherwise might not think school is important or might not care about showing up to school. So think about the chance that you would have to change and impact a, a young person's life. You can help a new resident by setting up their home. I think that's so exciting when you get to actually be a part of like bringing somebody into a new home and being able to help them get the things that they need for their home. We also partner with a company that helps identify if your company might be a match and, and double your impact of your gift. So many companies out there will double the gift you give to the organization. So we have a, a great link on our website that helps you check and see if you can do that. So it's another wonderful, amazing way to, to do more. And, oh, go ahead. Yeah. So forwarding the newsletter, but here's what I would say. Take time to educate your friends. I was with somebody yesterday who told me she lives on a cul-de-sac. She tells her friends all day long about the great things that are happening in the world. So don't be shy. Share the knowledge that you have gathered today and share it with others and let others know how they might be able to be a part of the solution. You can also include Hope Solutions in your estate planning, just to add on to all of the housing. Uh, sorry, I just lost my thought. Um, but that's another wonderful way to support Hope Solutions. Um, the other piece of this, like today, like what Jasmine and I are doing, we can ask and invite our friends to support Hope Solutions in, in, uh, in lieu of birthday gifts. We had several birthdays this last, um, in the last month, and one of the donations, we, we received over $5,000 in donations just by someone sharing out, instead of giving me a gift, please just send something to Hope Solutions. It's just an amazing way to offer a gift back to the community. Right. And then last but not least, and I think we've talked about this, the advocacy, just remembering that it's really important for us all to be advocating for our brothers and sisters and to be reminding everyone around us how important it is to care for the vulnerable and the needy in our communities. So the last slide is just to also give you a chance. I know we've talked a lot about the housing, and I want to encourage you to think about all sorts of creative ways to provide housing and to be a part of this solution. I want to thank you so much for allowing us to be here, for caring. Um, I hope you'll join us in being a beacon of light um, and hope and possibility, and peace be upon you.
Thank you again to Jasmine and Carrie. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your words of wisdom, for the presentation, for helping to remind us about hope and how we, Hillcrest, can be hope to all of our neighbors. Uh, Jasmine said something that was profound for me, that God gives us chances. God gives us chances, family, all the time to be a beacon of hope, to be the hands and feet of God and gives us that invitation. And so today we thank God for the ways in which we can be good stewards of all that we have and all that's been poured into our lives and to provide hope to those in need, to bring an end to poverty and to aid those that are unhoused. Love for our neighbor is why our hearts right now are broken, why our hearts right now are cracked wide open as we watch the conflict and the terror and the war that's going on in the Middle East. We pray for peace, we pray for safety for our Jewish and Palestinian neighbors in the region. Our hearts are also broken as we mourn the loss, the recent passing of our dear friend of our beloved Martha Engelbert, a beautiful soul, a beautiful soul. Special prayers also are in place for churches of Kona, Hawaii on the Big Island. They are being targeted this morning by a hate group from Topeka, Kansas. Prayers of protection and healing, please, for that faith community. We pray also for those within our Hillcrest community. We pray for all of our families, specifically Dick and Shannon Merrill. We pray for Kathy Flagstead. We pray as Cindy continues to heal, and we say happy birthday. We pray for David's mother, Ellen, we are in prayer for Tim and Stacy, for Keel Handy, Pat Miller. We pray for Allison, our pastoral associate, for Jack Nelson, who fell Friday and broke his arm. We pray also for Shirley May and her children as they take their journey. We pray for the Cruz family who are under the weather, specifically for Brian, who will have surgery coming up this week. We pray, family, for all of our government officials. We pray for our first responders, our nurses, our doctors, our administrators, our teachers, as well as students. We also bless not only Cindy with this happy birthday, but as well as Vicki Hackett. And so as we are sandwiched in between the joys and the concerns, we ask that God, our creator, lean in because God does lean in and hears all prayers, spoken and those unspoken. And so we take a few moments right now for you to lift up your prayers, either aloud or silently in your heart. Harvey Kendrick, Brian Kendrick, Casey Carey Corey and Kimberly. All those 
Ich hoffe, ihr wollt auch wieder irgendwas auf von der Erde. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for leaning in, leaning in as we are trying our best. And we don't always get it right, but we ask for your grace and your mercy to shine upon us so that we indeed can be hope. We thank you for leaning into prayers that we lift up, those that are spoken aloud and those that remain in our hearts. Comfort us, hold us, keep us, bring us together, dear God. May peace reign in this kingdom, in this part of your vineyard called Hillcrest Congregational Church. And so right now we collectively lift up and pray the prayer that Jesus taught us together, family. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come together again in our sanctuary at a table of hope. Let us all continue this church year in the spirit of hospitality, peace, grace, joy, and hope. In this spirit, let us offer our gifts as a symbol that we are united in ministry to do the work of Jesus Christ in our community and beyond. The ushers will now move among us to collect our offerings.
pray with me? A God of compassion, your son Jesus was born among us poor, humble, and dependent. Open our eyes and our hearts and our hands to honor him now by welcoming him in those who are hungry and thirsty, in all who are abandoned and lonely, in refugees, in the poor, the sick, the unhoused. Let our love become free and spontaneous, like the tenderness you have shown us in your Son. Bless the gifts and the givers of time and talent that we have brought to you today. Accept our offerings as an expression of our deep thanks for all the blessings in our lives. Amen. Please stay standing if you are able for our closing hymn. We are singing All My Hope on God is Founded, verses 1 and 3. Once again, family, we are so blessed and grateful for Jasmine as well as Carrie from Hope Solutions joining us this morning. As you go out into the world, family, hear these words. Go forth into the world. Be the hands and feet of God. Hear the cries of those in need. Go into God's world, enabled by the Creator. Love this world as God has loved you. Care tenderly always for all of creation. Go and faithfully serve. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. <laughs>